Hello and welcome back to Cars and Coffee. It's been a while, but we're going back strong with the Hot Rod show. That's the theme. Although, as you can see, there's not many Hot Rods. We'll get to that in a bit. Sort of diversified, but there's nothing wrong with a little bit of different vehicles, including some brand spanking new ones. And I have to come clean. This is actually a combination of multiple events, including one for work which was an open track day. No, I did not get to drive, but there were cars on the track, which you shall see. So a little bonus I'll splice in whenever relevant. But with all that being said, let's get her started with the Italians. There weren't many Italians, although I do quite like the De Tommaso Pantera. And we had a Ferrari SF90 Stradale. Really needs to be in red, but still quite nice. Instead, the real Italian show was on the track. Not much beats the sound of a Ferrari 488 Challenge Evolution car, but we move on to the Americans as you can tell by the Ford F-Series monster truck. Yeah, they had plenty of vehicles, most of them classic muscle cars, like the SS 454 here, or some more rare vehicles, like the Bricklin SV1 with its going doors. It's definitely not a DeLorean, because the DeLorean is more famous. Ford actually had a pretty good attendance with both the Pinto and the significantly faster vehicle, the Mustang Dark Horse 2024 model. I thought it would be more impressive looking given the name and the performance, but it kind of just looks like a GT with a cool badge. Probably very good handling, but I was hoping for a little bit more pizzazz. The Formula Drift Fox body definitely has more pizzazz. Well, not Formula Drift, but Drift Car. Very much, um... The opposite of Sunnel. I love the look of that Fox Buy. This Fox Buy is also pretty good from ASC McLaren, the same guys that made the Buick GNX. Shelby showed up with both a 65 Shelby GT5 350, not 500, GT350, and a few Factory 5 Cobras, including this one in a very orange paint. But my favorite Shelby was actually a Dodge, specifically the Charger GLHS goes like hell some more, one of the fastest cars of its day. Surprising given that it's a little four cylinder turbo, but Shelby is a magic man, I'll tell you that. And the American trend continues as we go to the Chrysler division with Dodge and Plymouth bringing out various muscle cars, including the Charger there in a brilliant purple. And the Coronet here in a much more subtle, if you can say that is subtle, for an RT, blue. I also love the paint job on this. We do actually have some hot rods. I like to point out we had that hot rod. We had the proper Deuce Coupes in the 32 Fords. So there were a few classics at this show. Not many, but there were a few. Although I do like the fact that the supercharger is bigger than the car, so... Quality over quantity again. We move on to the Japanese next. And this is where things, in my opinion, get really interesting. We have some normal cars like the FBR X7 or the Toyota Land Cruiser, you know, staples of the Japanese culture in the automotive sense. We also have some modern cars like the GR Corolla, an absolute legend of rallying, air quotes, homologation. It's basically a GR Yaris, but homologated for the U.S., some other legends like the Nissan GTR R32 Skyline and the R34 GTR wagon. Technically, it's a Nissan Stagia with an R34 front end and Nismo rims, but it's still awesome to see a proper JDM estate, even if it's disguising itself as a GTR. Bloody good disguise, that one, though. Sticking with the blue estate cars, the Audi RS6, much cleaner than the previous RS6s that we've seen. Sticking with the blue, Audis, the RSQ e-tron thingy, what do you want to call it? Very fast electric sedan, even if it's a little overpriced. We also have some Mercedes, continuing off the German tradition, including a bi-turbo V12 S63 AMG. An absolute torque monster that luxury sedan because you need that in a luxury sedan but i quite liked 
all of these cars are nice, but I was a really big fan of Porsche. I know, I know, it's cliche, but I just, I find them great. I mean, look at this Porsche GT3 4.0. It has Forza Aero in real life. Real life Forza Aero, that's just comically stupid. I almost like it, even with the fact it ruined a perfectly good GT3. Luckily, there were some other great Porsches that were not ruined, like the 911 70th Anniversary Speedster, or... If you want to go really hardcore, we saw it a teaser a few months ago, but this is a full-bore close-up 911 GT3 RS. The Porsche that left nothing on the table, even Porsche themselves, so they don't know how to make this thing faster, which is probably a lie, but whatever. It's got the little fins to, dis to take away the heat from the rear wing, which is not only a swan neck biplane wing, it also has a DRS system to minimize drag on the straightaways. It's a masterpiece, and yet, somehow, it is not my favorite Porsche in show, because I've technically seen this before. I haven't seen this before. The 2023 Porsche 911 Dakar. I didn't even think these things were in the U.S., but here they are with the lifted suspension, rally tires, bash uh, underside at the front, proper rally-ready Porsche 911. It's one of my favorite cars period right now. I think it's glorious, and I see it in the flash was such a welcome surprise. you're wondering why I included the Radical from Britain at the beginning instead of at the end like the other ones is because that vehicle doesn't really fit with the end of the British segment. You see, we're starting out in Britain with all the very fast cars like the Jaguar XFRS, the Lotus Savora 400, and then we start to get slower cars, more interesting cars like the classic roadsters from MG, the MGB and the MGTC and the Triumph Spitfire. So these classic British roasters that are small, not very fast, but bloody brilliant in terms of styling and drivability. And although I love these cars very much, and I love the Porsche 911 Dakar, my favorite car in show is a Reliant Robin. Yes, they actually had a real, bona fide Reliant Robin in the flesh. Three wheels and all. Again, not a vehicle I thought was in the U.S. I certainly didn't expect it. And I certainly didn't expect it to see parked next to a Ferrari SF90. But I can guarantee you, the Reliant got more pictures taken of it because it's brilliant. It's a Reliant Robin. It's so stupid. It's like seeing a Yugo. It's... I love it to death. It's one of my favorite cars I've seen in a very long time. And all the track racing was brilliant... Sometimes you just need a three-wheeler. But the Woolworth Cruise is coming up, and I'll be back with more.